invest every single day is part of building your confidence and part of what you're going to cash in on come that first game of the season. Millions of guys want to do the same thing that you guys do, right? Millions of guys want to go to that next level, okay? What's going to set you apart from all those other guys? them to understand that as long as they bring that motivation with them each and every day when they walk in the door, we're going to get the best out of them and we're going to give them the best opportunity to succeed on the field. Right now, this point uh, in the season for Elite Performance Academy is a crucial time. You know, we're in a bit of a transition period right now where, you know, as a coaching staff, we're evaluating the guys from our summer program, our summer D2D program uh, that went away to university. Uh, some guys were down in the NCAA, um, the rest of the guys that were in the CIS, and we're kind of analyzing their performance, checking in with those guys, and looking at how successful we were uh, as strength coaches in preparing those guys. And things look pretty good from that end. And with that, we're also taking our information now and preparing for what's going to be upcoming with our D2D Winter High School program um, and getting those finishing touches together with regards to training, our on-field um, programming, um, testing, and all of those kind of things that we're, uh, we're really looking forward to. Well, I mean, it's been busy for us, a uh, combination of training our, our current athletes that are in here, obviously working their programs, uh, as well as keeping tabs on, on the guys that, that were here as part of the summer and part of the in-season program. Um, we've been uh, obviously keeping track on our CIS guys who did uh, extremely well. Uh, you know, John Bewald, for example, uh, ended up uh, being named uh, OUA Player of the Week twice, Defensive Player of the Week, and uh, was also named the CIS uh, Defensive Player of the Week one time. Uh, finished as an OUA All-Star, uh, finished in the top 10 in four major defensive categories, um, sacks, tackles for loss, forced fumbles. Uh, just had an outstanding breakout year for him, and uh, we're really excited to see what, uh, what he's going to bring uh, to the offseason and hopefully preparations for, uh, for CFL draft next year. Brad Herps, uh had an outstanding season this year, um, you know, probably a runner-up for an all-star candidation. He, um, he's one of those guys, as, and I said this before, that I was really excited to see the impact of the D2D summer season and how that was going to reflect through his game. And I mean, there's nothing more I, I could have asked for as a coach in terms of being proud and how Brad performed. Uh, I think he really established himself as one of the up-and-coming linebackers in the CIS. He finished this year fourth uh, in the nation in tackles, uh, fifth in tackles for loss. I think he had about ten and a half tackles for a loss, which indicate the type of player he is. You know, around the action, creating things, making things happen. And as a linebacker, I think he really established himself this year. Um, I think the conditioning component for him was the biggest thing that really had a positive impact on Brad's season. Uh, I think mentally too. You know, he had that mental approach from day one when he came in here. Uh, I think we had to really work with him a little bit and he, I think his transformation throughout the entire summer reflected in his season. Uh, well, Curtis Schaefer had an outstanding season as a, as a rookie, a true freshman uh, for Queens Gales. Uh, I know they finished a little bit short in terms of what they were looking to accomplish as a team this year. But from an individual standpoint, you know, Curtis, uh, he came out of our winter D2D program, transitioned very smoothly into our summer program, and he showed up to camp ready to go. Um, his work, his effort, his uh, attention to detail, which is something I hammered home with him from a defensive standpoint, uh, that all paid off for him. And he went to camp, earned a spot, had a couple things happen that were great for him in terms of timing, and he took advantage of every opportunity, ended up playing the entire year as a true freshman. One of the things from the, um, the EPA athletes that we want to see and a big priority of ours is progression. The progression is a key with a lot of the kids. So all of the kids that come in, you know, from the moment that we have a chance to sit down, talk with them, discuss what our game planning is with them um, and their parents as well, uh, we also, we start long-term planning for those kids. So when we have a kid and he comes in at 14 or 15 years old, uh, some as young as 12, what we start doing there is putting a game plan with the long-term vision in place. Now, you know, for those kids that stay and go through that entire process of learning how to train, how to train properly, safely, effectively, 
we transition them along those. So we go from a D2D winter program, they put a couple years in through there. Uh, we have them in their on-field stuff with our Elite Football Academy, um, our Elite Speed Academy. And again, they're putting all of those components of training and performance together, building on what um, they're trying to achieve in pursuit of that vision. Um, the good thing is, you know, we've had a couple kids that have gone through our entire program and the results of their efforts um, investing in their performance and their future has started to show. You know, two kids in particular that we had were Carter Wilson uh, and Curtis Schaefer, who both started off in our um, Speed Academy, our Elite Football Academy, and started off with our D2 Winter Program. They both transitioned uh, very nicely from those programs right into our summer D2D camp uh, with our university guys or those guys that are in pursuit of university. Um, Carter uh, Wilson ended up attaining his goal of uh, earning an NCAA Division I scholarship at University of North Dakota. He went through that system. Uh, Curtis earned the opportunity to go and play for the Queens Gales. He went through that entire system and those are two exam uh, excellent examples of guys that committed to the process us, went through the winter, in season, off season, and uh, achieved what they wanted to achieve. Uh, yeah, so actually you get a book whenever you start with EPA and you gotta fill out questions and it's not like, oh, I just wanna get bigger, stronger, faster. You actually have to like put in like what you wanna see a change in. Um, so me, whenever I went to EPA, uh, I needed to gain weight for my position. I need, wanted to get faster and um, I just wanted to get overall like more explosive off the line of scrimmage. Um, so whenever you go there, like all those concepts are into their program on their own already. So it's not like they need to mix it up for you. Um, but yeah, like I remember first time going there, um, you have to write what schools you want to go to, what your top three are in NCAA, what your top three are in CIS. And I remember writing like NCAA, like my dreams to go there. I want to play there. Like that's what I want to do. And um, they're like, yeah, well, we can help you do it, but you're the one that's going to have to do the work, right? So like they, they'll put all the tools in place for you to do it. And it's up to you to show up to the training sessions and, and get it done. So yeah, it was, I had a great experience with EPA. Um, yeah, so like for me, I needed to gain weight. So Donnie put together um, a meal plan for me and it honestly lays out like in the morning you're gonna have four eggs and then you're gonna have a handful of nuts and then you're gonna have you know what I mean your shake or whatever so like stuff like that like the little things um, really help also at the end of the um, older 2d2 summer program with like the CIS and NCAA guys um, you get like they do protein at the end of a workout right just making sure that even if you can't afford to buy the supplement like you're still gonna get something um, to help you out um, and then also for me like in my decision process like once I got my offer from UND like deciding on okay like should I commit to my first one should I wait like what weighing the options and having having Pat who went through that and also like Donnie who, who went through that too like he was down the states and came back um, you know just having their like experience and their like what they would do and like their opinion really does help a lot uh, yeah. going forward and they're always they're always there for like anything you need like you text them you call them like they're always there to talk and it's great it's a great support system well like it starts right at the beginning as soon as you walk in the gym if your shoes aren't lined up along the side of the wall in like a perfectly straight line like it's it's not good you start running right away at the beginning of, of the workout and they do that all throughout like they just they want you to respect their equipment. They want you to respect their time, right? So don't be showing up late. Um, you know, they give you the books for a reason and they, and they have like your sleep in them. Like, what are you getting for sleep? What are you eating? You know what I mean? Stuff like that, like food logs. And, and it's not to be boring and it's not like that kind of stuff. It's to be accountable and for you to see what you're doing. And also for them to see like if you're doing the right things or if it's their program, right? Because they have their program in place, but if you're not like eating right outside of the program and you're not, you know what I mean, getting the right sleep and you're not, you know what I mean, doing all the little things like that you should be accountable for, um, then their program's not gonna do as well as it could. So they just wanna see you succeed. And by doing the little things like putting your shoes to the right spot and bringing your books and bringing your after uh, workout nutrition, it's just ensuring that it's gonna become a strong habit and then eventually like it's gonna do you better in the long run because their program's gonna work.
Uh, the biggest difference is really just the, the stage in the development of the athletes, right? So the CIS guys, we're really prepping those guys to go to a university training camp uh, imminently, right? As soon as that program's done, they're stepping on the field at a university uh, training camp and they need to be prepared to perform at their very best. Uh, a little bit different for the, for the winter D2D, these are high school athletes who are getting ready for, potentially for a spring season uh, or really just making the most of their off season to get ready for the summer or fall season next year. So um, a little bit more focus on development, uh, obviously these athletes are a little bit younger so they're uh, just at a different stage developmentally in terms of their lifts, their power production, um, all those kind of things. So uh, just, a, just a matter of, of tailoring the program that, uh, to make it appropriate to the athletes that we have. Uh, one of the things, you know, this particular Encafa season that uh, Pat and myself decided to sit down was, you know, let's go and actually start to go and look and scout for some of the types of athletes that we're looking for, um, you know, in conjunction with what we know that other university coaches are looking for as well. So, you know, we made a decision to sit down, we plotted out what the Encafa season would look like, went through all the scheduling, picked out some games that we wanted to see where we knew there'd be uh, certain athletes that would be uh, performing in those games, and at the same time, looking for some of those diamonds in the rough that would benefit from training with us at Elite Performance Academy. A number of the guys from last season's winter D2D uh, maintained their training throughout the season and kept a, an in-season program, worked it around their schedule and were able to maintain their strength and speed and all that stuff right throughout the season. Um, and uh, in fact, all, all of those guys ended up uh, being in CAFA All-Stars at the end of the season. Uh, Alex McComb and Evan Yurth for the Canada Knights, uh, Quinn Stewart and uh, Brad Cowan for the uh, Bel Air Norsemen and uh, Matt Lachance for the uh, Gatineau Vikings. All, all five guys actually uh, maintained a solid in-season program, kept their strength, kept their speed, kept working it in between practices and games and uh, it paid off for them uh, at the end of the season. A big focus of ours for this uh, for this fall season was to get out to some games and practices and actually see guys playing live. Uh, it's one thing to, to watch the film and, and that kind of stuff and to see them in here training, but we wanted to see them performing on the field. We wanted to see them interacting with teammates, um, dealing with struggles during a game, how they reacted, all those kind of things. So uh, it was a great opportunity for us to, to see really see a lot of guys in action. And uh, you know, one of the one of the highlights for us obviously was uh, was the midget championship game uh, where Bel Air uh, Norsemen were a bit of an upset champion and uh, two of our guys uh, ended up doing extremely well. Uh, qu uh, quarterback Quinn Stewart ended up being the team MVP and uh, defensive end Brad Cowan was the uh, the team rookie of the year as well. Uh, those are two guys again that, that maintained their in-season program, came through the D2D winter, trained all through the summer, all through the fall and were able to uh, keep performing at their highest potential uh, throughout the entire season.